Hi, it's Maria from the Fox 11 Newsroom here in Los Angeles, and guess who I have? The beautiful and very tough uh, Rhonda Rousey, going to be fighting uh, the first, really, first first female fighter in the UFC octagon coming up. Yep, yep. And uh, so we're going to find out more about that and some other fights probably down the line, and also some fashion tips. I'm just kidding. I'm just, I'm just kidding. Uh, and then uh, let me talk to these guys here, and let me introduce you to everybody. This is Daniel, who has his gi with him today. Hi, Daniel. Daniel's in Boston. We've got Deanna who is in Reno. Also, Yo. Fan. Yo. Jimmy uh, from Koreatown here in LA. Hi. Justin is in uh, uh, Brighton in, in England. Wow. Kempton is in Hi. Calgary, Canada. Hi, Rhonda. Kyle Hello. is in Milwaukee. You got Tom who's in Atlanta and uh, Trev who is in uh, the UK as well. He's in New York. Nice. Cool. Bradford. All over the place. Yeah, from all over the world. If you guys are watching, by the way, online on YouTube or on G+, if you've got a question for Rhonda, just tag me or anyone in the Hangout. Actually, it's better if you tag one of the guys in the Hangout. That way they can get the question to us. Or just leave a comment on the YouTube channel and I will get them to Rhonda for sure. Shaka, did I have this set up right here on the comment section? Because sometimes I can't fill up this one. This one. I did it. Ah, oh, that's my problem. Oh, the technology. Yeah. So you guys, if you have a question, um, I, you know to just go to me, right? They put their hands up. They're they raising do. their hands. Yeah. Yeah. They're yeah. yeah. students, so aren't they? Okie dokie. Well, one second. Okay. There Am we I go. allowed to swear on this? No. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Go ahead. Hey. Yes. Oh, you still want? Dana did. You oh, can yeah, too. Hey, guys. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> what's up? Hell, yeah. Okay. It's like, I'm, I'm just going to kick things off. Uh, okay. Rhonda, I am a huge fan of yours. You know, back in the Strike Force days, it's like I thought. Well, one fight was particularly funny. It's like I, I, I honestly thought that Misha Tate would actually make you go to a second round for a second there. I was like, is she finally going to get to a second round? Is this really about that? Oh, guess not. But um, <laughs> my question, my first question I wanted to ask you is like, I mean, obviously this upcoming fight at UFC 157 is a very big deal. You know, first ever women's fight in the UFC period. Uh, th there's a lot of people that have a, that. Are, are really judging a lot on this upcoming fight. Um, you know, just women in the UFC period. Um, I mean, just are you feeling that pressure? You know, main eventing this thing, kind of being the forefront of WMMA right now. It's like, are you feeling that? Um, I mean, I guess so, but I don't really feel it in a negative way. I mean, I'm glad that I have this kind of pressure because it means we have this kind of opportunity. And, um, you know, I was a little bit concerned about it as well. And, you know, I talked to Dana and I'm like, dude, you know, are you sure that you want to do a pay-per-view off the bat? And he says, look, it's your, it's your job to fight. It's our job to sell it. Mm. You know, so, um, <laughs> that sounds like Dana. yeah, so they kind of do whatever they can to, to, uh, not make me feel so much pressure, but of course I do feel responsibility for it. And yeah, it is kind of like, um, like the pilot version. So uh, the, how this event does, I think, is is very, very uh, pivotal to how women's the, MMA does in right, the future. It's going to be the test, right? Now, yeah. Dana White, for years, was adamant against having women mm -hmm. in uh, in the ring or in, in the octagon. What do you think changed his mind? Because just last year, he, he changed his mind. Um, you know, I just refused to be ignored. I, I decided that, look, I would... I'm going to make it so this company th realizes that they need me. They don't even know it. Mm -hmm. And so um, there was a while of you just couldn't get away from me. I was saying something or some article. It was just constant, constant, constant um, to where they just they couldn't ignore me anymore. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. So then they had to um, watch the, the fight between me and Misha. And uh, I think that's what really... Uh, what's it called, brought it to the forefront and brought it to everyone's attention, not just because the fight itself was awesome, but there was the, a kind of build-up in that fight that you really see on the men's side. You never really saw, saw with the women before. Mm -hmm. And uh, just like the overwhelmingly big uh, response that we got, I think, is what really uh, convinced them. I figured uh, you just threatened to kick his ass. <laughs> <laughs> there's a, there's Have you ever that. seen his bodyguard, dude? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lisa's going to do, a, uh, Lisa's gonna do a quick hit on the set, so we're going to bring the volume down just a little bit. Um, They're telling me to be quiet. Just, I, just a little bit. It's just, not I, so much I just I mumble. It's, it's either like you can't understand me or it's like theater voice. You know, like it's one or the other. It's, it's either on or off. Yeah. Right? On or off. I totally get it. Jimmy, you, what's your quick question? Go ahead. 
Yeah, I just wanted to say, first of all, you are beautiful, and I've been, well, I, and I've seen you on TMZ, and I've been, I've seen, I've seen you in the Olympics and things like that, and I know you, um, I know that you followed uh, your mother. Your mother was a uh, was was a martial arts. Uh, she taught you martial arts at a young age. When did you uh, decide that you wanted to do MMA or do this kind of uh, do this kind of fighting? Uh, at what age? Uh, like I think I was 21. Mm -hmm. It was while I was bartending and. Um, what I would do to keep in shape pretty much during the week is I, was, I would go to highest end and do no-gi with the guys and because um, I was tired of doing judo and I thought no-gi was so much more fun because it was like faster and um, then they just started saying oh yeah you could totally beat all these other girls and then one day I was like you know what you're right I think I could win right now I think without any training I could do it and then they're like wait no don't do it don't do it we don't want you to get hit and I'm like oh well now that they said I can't do it I'm going for it so um, it, was kinda, it was kind of like an organic development uh, right on no one tried to discourage you from getting into into this well, business. I just, I just told you though. Like, as soon I mean, as your mom. <laughs> my mom hated it. My mom hated it in the beginning because like yeah, she was even working. Even though she helped inspire you, she, she helped didn't say, well, with the judo. She did, but MMA. You know, she was. Uh, women didn't really have a place in it yet, and she didn't think it was a very secure career option. And she was working at USC as a senior statistical consultant. So I would actually have gotten a. Um, a scholarship to an, almost any kind of private right. school, you like Pepperdine mm -hmm. and USC, and mm -hmm. that's what my sister went and did. Mm -hmm. uh, she got her degree because of that, and my mom was very upset that I didn't take advantage of it and decided to go do the fighting thing, and that's why I told her, I was like, just give me a year, mm -hmm. give me one okay. year, I'll okay. make it work, if it doesn't work, then I'll go to USC. Okay. And then, um, but I did it in You're a year, and work. I'm not yeah. in school, so <laughs> 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 uh, I'm sorry, Daniel, go ahead, what's your question? Um, I just want to say, uh, as others have, you know, obviously a big fan. I've been, uh, I've been training BJJ now uh, three years, and uh, I was, uh, had the honor of a week ago finally earning my blue belt. But uh, I am actually outside of Boston, and some of my teammates uh, train some of their judo up in Wakefield, where, if I'm not mistaken, you spent some time, correct? Wakefield, yep, yep. All right. So I, my, my main question is, what are you doing in your drilling and in, in your, your preparation? You know, y your opponents know what you're going to do, and they cannot stop you from doing it. With their corner the whole time is, don't get caught in an arm lock. And lo and behold, <laughs> they're caught in the arm lock. So what, what is it that you do in terms of your drilling and your training that, that gets you that prepared, that no matter how much they're prepared to counter whatever it is you're doing, you still get it? Um, I think it's just because I've been doing it for so long, and there's a lot of very little things that, that people miss. If they're, if they're watching like video, there's things that you can't really pick up on. And um, it's not just the arm bar itself. Like, the arm bar is the end. It's everything that leads up to it that, um, that is really important. And um, I think just from judo, I, um, I, I'm just very fortunate where, you know, any kind of upper body, clint, any hand position I can throw from because of all the weird gripping in judo that you just get used to throwing from all angles, like even like upside down and all that stuff. And also, um, in judo, you only have like two or three seconds, you know, to, to get a submission. It's not like jujitsu. It's like, you know, hang out my guard for 10 minutes. I got time, you know. It's not like that. You got to get it done. And um, I think just those kind of tendencies and that, that quick transition is what other people, you know, they could try and train for it for a couple of weeks, but really developing that skill takes like a decade of work, and it's hard to get that done in a couple months. I just want to yeah. quick, quickly read a question from a viewer here. It says, what do you think of Dan Henderson's team not happy with you uh, being the main event? Well, um, I was expecting some sort of backlash, but I mean, to be honest, I wasn't expecting it from Dan Henderson because if you watch the fight between him and Shogun, he was dominating in the first three rounds and he was kind of faded towards the end. And, and plus, if I was Shogun, I wouldn't want, you know, it, he's had an amazing, long, legendary career and having more five round wars towards the end of it is not probably a great idea if he wants, you know, another title shot coming up. And, um, I mean, it just sounds like they're not so much upset that they're fighting three rounds instead of five. I think they're more upset that um, the status implied in fighting under a woman. And, um, you know, and I was expecting that. I wasn't expecting that from him. But um, whatever, dude. It's, it is what it is. So It is what it is. Exactly. Exactly. Hey, Deanna, what's your question? Uh, first off, based on that, it's like I'm just going to say one thing. You're the champ. Hindo isn't. He can shut up. <laughs> uh, secondly, it's like I, I've been telling people that this fight is going to be awesome with you and Liz. It's going to be an amazing fight, you know, both minutes of it. Hopefully, if you let her last the whole two minutes. So, um, 
what I really wanted to ask, like, I mean, you're going to win this fight. We, you know it, and I know it. Uh, so after you win this fight, and and um, just just just, what do you do <laughs> after a fight? You know, after you've won, after you've won, you know, pretty much what thus far is the biggest fight of of your career to this point. I mean, do I do like after? Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's like I mean, what's the game plan? It's like I mean, just that that feeling of relief is like this big event was coming up. It's over. I've still got the belt. Now what? I'm going to Disneyland. I don't party. I'm so lame, dude. Like you know, that's how you stay fit and healthy, right? It's not really fit. Like I will sit on a couch and turn off my cell phone and play Donkey Kong, eat Ben and Jerry's for a straight week. You know, (laughs) (laughs) really, really, really active people really appreciate rest. Like doing nothing, like it's a treat. Like doing nothing is such like a treat to me because every day it's like. You know, you're gonna fly the Thunderbirds, and you're on the show, and you're in this thing, and you're in a pet lizard, and then this, you know, it's like so many oh. random disjointed things, it's so overstimulating that I was just like to be understimulated in the week afterwards. I just want to quickly ask this question, and I gotta run on the set, you guys. But I saw an interview with you about how you prep for a fight because we've talked to <laughs> fighters. We've talked to fighters here. I mean, seriously, we talked to Mike Tyson, we've talked to other UFC fighters, and they totally they they get on their own. They don't do anything. They don't yeah. even see their wives or their girlfriends. But I saw your interview and you were like the opposite of that, right? And that's where I was going with my hand true? up. Was right Someone, Someone was going there. I was waiting for it. Someone was going to go there. Like, everyone is, is all true? about it. Is that, is that really? It's true, okay? It's true. If you're a girl, it helps. It helps. It's nice. I mean, come on. Okay. I mean, it kind of sucks for the guys. I'm sorry, but um, yay for but us. But it makes sense. <laughs> it, but it, makes se- it made sense to me. That, yeah. that you would, you know, you're pumped up on testosterone. I need to do that. It's almost like you take it I out of. I go to work every morning. Oh, the biting sign as well. <laughs> I need some testosterone. I'll be right back. I'm gonna go get some. This is the sign everyone's talking about. <laughs> yeah. Then after the fight, you lounge out. So pre-fight. Wait, wait, you... just for me. So pre-fight. Yeah. <laughs> pre-fight. <laughs> well, well, I'm sure Shaka wouldn't mind if you ignored that rule. Um, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> so, so, I have a couple questions. So. Uh, Working in the MMA, I actually have a background in martial arts and a few different. And um, actually, I was here. Rob McCullough was here the other day, and we were talking about Muay Thai. Because uh, um, and since you're local, um, I actually trained um, at a gym that uh, in the valley. Uh, are you familiar with a guy by the name of Crew Rex? Have you heard that name? I'm terrible with names. That's okay. Does so he run Rex Kondo? No. As a no, joke. No. It's okay. <laughs> So what other martial arts have you trained in to, to hone the weapons, the tools, as you, if you will? Um, well, I mean, I do striking, but it's not right. like, I don't, call it, been a I don't call it Muay Thai striking or boxing striking. Right. I mean, we do it all to make me into a more efficient grappler. Mm-hmm. You know, so I'm not trying to become, you know, a Muay Thai extraordinaire and then be right. a judo extraordinaire and somehow making them fit. We're building off of the judo and attaching the striking that would make the judo most effective. So it really is a, a well-rounded mixed martial arts yes, yes, uh, approach, regimen. Rather yeah. than a, a, I formally and I have belts here and I have belts here and I do this. Yeah, I mean it's lucky that um my my striking coach he's one of the the, the boxing coaches of Wild Card. Mm-hmm. He also uh, is a former um, world champion in Muay Thai okay. and has a long uh, history in uh, in karate and Sancho uh, Edmund Tiverdian. Okay. He's okay. actually Edmund. He is Armenian and he. That's because he's the man. That's why you've heard of him. He's fighting this Saturday. <laughs> I'm cornering him. It's at the Hollywood Park Casino. Um. Uh, and yeah, it's gonna be bomb. I can't wait. I'm gonna be his only corner. This guy is so such, such a badass. He's gonna wrap his own hands and have his own student be his corner. That, yeah, that, that's pretty, yeah, that's pretty, pretty balling of him. So, huh? But the good thing is, if a fight <laughs> breaks out outside the ring, you can whoop butt. You can. Yeah. Whoop, I'm gonna say it, you can whoop ass. And if I, I have heels ball. on, you ever push kick someone in a heel? Shanked. I think I'll go ahead and pass on that. Uh, no, thank you. <laughs> Ronda. Well, that will really test if you have abs or still, because if you can deflect a push kick with the heels, heels, you're a bad dude. I don't bad. think it has anything to do with your abs. The thing has nothing to do with, like, never mind. Still played under the, Oh, I see where you're going with that. I wasn't going anywhere. Where, where are you going, going with where that? Where are you going? Where are you going? <laughs> Do I need to add to the no biting sign? <laughs> 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 Well, no, no, Kempton's got a question. Kempton question. Randa, I got. got, Kyle, Kyle, then Kempton, then we got a a, a follow up shot. I was wondering what uh, what it was like uh, shooting the ESPN body issue. What was it like? Mm -hmm. It was pretty breezy. 
Um, <laughs> <laughs> and it, it was really, really hot that day. And I was like, dude, why can't I be naked on a cold day? I'm going to end up with Amazon titties because it's all hot. <laughs> but um, they disagree. They said it looked all cool. So. <laughs> wow. But no, no, it was cool. It was cool. I mean, once you're like, I was nervous at first, but. It was funny because they like sponge you, like they sponge paint you, and the guy they, they sponge paint your business too. And the guy doing it right before he like he gets to it, he's like, "Don't worry, honey, I have a boyfriend." <laughs> and I'm like, "Oh." <laughs> 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 I was like, "Can someone bring me some alcohol or something?" Like, I want to be beforehand, and it, they, yeah, they didn't bring the tequila wow. until afterwards. So uh, <laughs> sober, sober, naked shoot. Good God. <laughs> I'm just speechless. Yeah. I'm, I, I I follow I'm, so speechless. I'm going to let Kimpton have the last question here. So All right, let me learn with the Kimpton question. Let, let me give it a try, Rhonda. Rhonda, you are so pretty, so charming. You Talking to you without knowing the background, you just you look like a singer. You look like a movie star. I want to ask you, are, if, are there men that come to you and couldn't take a hint? Have you ever need to put them in an arm, uh, arm lock or head lock <laughs> to get rid of them? How did you? How do you get rid of men? <laughs> How do I get rid of men? You know, I yeah. almost, I rarely get approached now these days. It's huh? I don't know. It's either people that are like, "Oh my God, I love you," or it's just like nothing. I, I don't know. Like, uh, no so, one so, really comes so up to me. I, I like, actually didn't know. No, oh, you. you like, so I actually didn't know you you break arm before. If if I approach you, I wouldn't get knocked out, right? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm 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 very uh, what's it called? I'm a lawsuit waiting to happen. When it comes to <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Good. I find your weakness. I find your weakness. <laughs> I, I don't have that element of surprise anymore either. Like it used to be like no one would suspect, but now people know. So they might have like they might be prepared. If someone pulls a gun on me, like ah. Uh, but well, you know, actually, that begs another question, and yeah. the final question, the real final question. Are other women, or even guys, trying to test you now that they know that you're the woman? Test me. Like, a lot of uh, MMA fighters, um, when as they, be, as they get more fame, they're out of bars, they're out hanging out, and guys either want to shake their hand or try to go around them. with it. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, so, I don't I don't go out gonna, ever really yeah. because kind of that reason cuz mm -hmm. it's just it's just an accident waiting to happen. Right. And you know, I used to be a cocktail waitress and now it's just in that setting where you know, there's so many people, someone will grab your ass and there's just nothing you can do. You don't know who it was and you're you're working. Right. And I just know that if I was in that kind of situation now, I'd react very differently and right. it would be a lot more trouble than it was worth. And plus, you know, when I go out and I'm like, first, like, uh, if I go out with my teammates who make up most of my friends, they don't let anyone talk to me anyway. You ever, like, try to go out with 15 Armenians? It's, like, the best way to not meet anyone. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I bet the other difference would be that before, if you broke the guy's arms, they wouldn't tell anybody. But now, mm -hmm. if you broke their arm, they're like, oh, my God, dude. They're like, sign I it, my sign it. it. I, I would be bragging. Sign my cast. Sign my cast. Well, Sign my you. cast. Oh yeah. <laughs> no problem. Uh, thank you, thank you. Morning. And thank you guys for taking the time to. Yeah. to do this. Let's take a real fast. Picture, picture. Going mine. Look up at the camera there, and they're gonna grab an image. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait. Do it again. I think you moved when I was trying to take it. Oh shush. Are you really? <laughs> no, it's yeah, too fast. Like yeah, you, yeah. You, you the camera fast. needs to focus. Yeah. I can swear all I want on this, right? So I can throw up the Stockton? Dude, do, do yeah, it. Yeah, do it. Go for it. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, got it. I love it. Now, that's the picture I wanted. Awesome. Right. Rhonda, I would wish you good luck you. in your fight, awesome. but I know you don't need it, so go out Thank there and you. kick ass, yeah? Thank you very much, guys. Yeah, kick ass, Rhonda.